Hello YouTube! Before I start recording this video properly, I would like to thank Chuetro22 for his request to do this video about the God Magnus. Since I never have inspiration for videos, requests are the stuff that keep this channel living, because I have no idea what you guys would like to hear. That said, let's kick off. The first question that arises when we hear the name Magnus is, who is Magnus? Well to answer that question immediately, Magnus is the god of magic. You can find him in a lot of elvish pantheons. He is one of the Ad Ada, or original spirits. Those were the spirits that inhabited the universe before the plane of Mundus was created. Magnus was one of the Ad Ada that were persuaded by Lorcan to go and create the, the plane of Mundus. It is said that Magnus is the one who was the architect of Mundus. He laid the groundworks for what would become the plane of Mundus, or the plane we all live in. Well, not we, but uh, the characters in the Elder Scrolls. As he and some of the other Ad Ada were busy creating Mundus, he noticed that a lot of the Ad Ada, including himself, were sacrificing their power to in order to create Mundus. This immediately made him flee the plane of Mundus and he went to Aetherius. He was the first of the Ad Ada to flee and still had much of his power. This made him rip a big hole in, a, in the plane of Mundus. The hole he left we can still see in all of the games. You may ask, how can we see Aetherius in the games? Well, to be honest, that hole is the sun. It means that the sun is not really the sun, but it's a hole to Aetherius, created by Magnus when he was rushing out of Mundus. After a certain time, the other Ad Ada started noticing they were losing their power too. But for many it was already too late. They had become small and weak. In their rush out of Mundus, they only left very small holes, which we can also see. Those are the stars. The spirits that stayed lost most, not, not, if not all, of their divine power. And they became the Elnofe, or original inhabitants of the Earth. Well, Earth... Mundus. But that's enough backstory here. Let's get back to Magnus. Once he fled the plane of the plane of Mundus, he became one of the Magna Grey. I don't know if I pro pronounce it correctly, but the spirits that, uh, they, those were the spirits that fled. This made him one of the gods in the Elfish pantheons. The Altmer and Bosmer saw him as the god of magic. In the pantheon of the Elites, he was worshipped and uh, worshipped as the god of sight and light and insight. As one of the more prominent gods of the Elites, they, de they dedicated a lot of temples to him. Elite legends say that Magnus sometimes inhabits the, the bodies of powerful mages to lend him his immense power. Just as Akatos is associated with a dragon, and Xenathar with an anvil, Magnus is associated with a staff. This is because he supposedly created and used it, the Staff of Magnus, one of the most ancient and powerful ar artifacts in all of Tamriel. Because it was used by Magnus in the creation of the world, but it was left behind when he left Mundus. It is said that this staff only would be able to handle the immense power of Magnus and make its wielder very powerful. However, the staff tends to leave the mage that wields it before he or she becomes too powerful. This way, the staff makes sure it will not disturb the magical balance of the universe. And finally, another of Tamriel's ancient artifacts added attributed to Magnus is the Eye of Magnus. This is an ancient relic of great power that was buried beneath the Nordic city of Sarthal in the Muradic era. And, was, and it was discovered by the Dragonborn during the Mages College questline. The Eye has immense power and it can only be pro properly controlled by the Staff of Magnus. The ancient Nords discovered it when they were building basements of their city Sarthal and they attempted to keep it buried. This however did not prevent the elves of hearing of, it, of the eye and hearing of its immense power. They immediately wanted it for their, themselves. This resulted in the Night of Tears, in which the entire population of Sarthal was murdered by the elves so they could have the eye for themselves. But Isgrimor rallied his people and with his men he prevented the elves from getting the eye. He and his men buried the eye even deeper beneath Sarthal and decided to, to seal it away forever until it was found by the Dragonborn at the end of the Mage's questline. At the end of the Mage's questline, the Sigic Order takes the eye with them uh, to their island for safekeeping because it's too powerful to be in the hands of mortals. Well guys, that's it. The mysteries of the mysterious Magnus are no more. 
If you have any questions, ask them in the comments and I will try to do my best to answer them. And as always, if you have a topic you want me to cover in a video, please put it in the comments. Because I have no idea well what to do for videos, so I just follow viewer suggestions. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you later.